Pelican's Restaurant is a centerpiece of fine dining in Albuquerque with the east and the west side locations. You got to say it like that, west side. West side. <laughs> west side, east side. Known for its fresh flown in seafood, certified Angus beef, and a chef who always is looking to wow the guests with nightly specials. And that does make us say wow, we like that. And of course, we're back now in our Builder Source kitchen with Pelican's east side chef, Franz Dinkelman, and Pelican's west side chef, Chad Bray. And they are cooking pignon crusted to Lapia with a red chili butter. Oh, boy, that sounds good. <laughs> it's decadent. It's decadent. Well, welcome both of you. Thanks Thank for you being here. And I want to I want to mention what I was saying before, which is it is so cool that you do specials because, you know, people, when something's a staple like Pelicans, you know, there's a reason people keep coming back for more, don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. After all these years, we have a, a daily fresh fish report, so we're always doing something different with whatever we have that's fresh and available. And... Uh, have fun with it. We really enjoy it. I love that. And you know, Kristen and I, when we first both moved here, we both come from places where we're near the ocean and we both had questioned, when you go to New Mexico, are you going to be able to find fresh seafood and fresh fish? And the answer is, especially with you guys, yes, indeed you are. Yeah, and that comes down to our, our reputable, reputable uh, uh, fish supplier. Yeah. On certain occasions, we get some fish that come, you know, 24 hours flown in from Hawaii or things like that. So we're, really? we're talking really fresh, yeah. See, and that's what, and that is something I think everybody wants to hear is that you can actually know that it's being flown in fresh within 24 hours. And that, to me, that's peace of mind when I'm eating fish, yeah, really. Totally. Yes. So today, tell us a little bit about what we're going to be having and how you're going to prepare it for us. Well, a lot of basic ingredients when, you know, put them all together comes, comes out really good. These are all things that you can buy at your local grocery store or Right. Food stores. Um, we're going to start by making a, a batter, and then we're going to make the crust, and we're going to throw it in a pan and get to start cooking. So. Fabulous. So to this point, while we were over there doing our other things, at this point, you've already put your ingredients aside. So what have you done so far? Well, the one thing with this dish that takes the most amount of time as far as prep work is making the chili butter, and that's because you got to you start with the chili pods, you de-seed mm. them, you take the stems off, and then you cook those down, and then you combine them with like a two-to-one ratio of the butter. And okay. we, you know, we do those in large batches because of the restaurant, but for a serving, if you're feeding four people or six people, you know, uh -huh. it'll probably take about 10 or 15 minutes of prep time. Okay, as far as the whole that. dish goes, that's, that's the, the longest prep thing. You can use the frozen red chili, too, if you don't have the time to sit and boil chili pods okay. for 20, 30 minutes, and it, it, it works out. As, not as well, but... But, yeah, good. well, there's no better not place New Mexico to do standard. it. Exactly. <laughs> New Mexico, it's a little different. If you were somewhere else, I'd say, oh, buy the chili. But here, it's kind of worth the work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, absolutely. It's worth it. Sure. Okay, so let's get started and All see right. what we're doing. So far, about it, we're just going to start with some buttermilk. Okay. And some egg. It's about a cup of buttermilk, about an egg. Okay. That's and we just whisk that up. Yeah. Plain and simple. And then for the crust, we have a whole bunch of flavors going on here. We start with basic all-purpose flour. Okay. And then some Japanese panko breadcrumbs to give mm, it that nice crunch. You know? I love panko. And then I what we it. did was um, we ground up some of the pinions because the less surface area you have, the less chance you have of them burning in the pan, and that's going to ruin the dish. So oh, good we, we break them up a little bit and throw them in there. Okay. That's a good tip. I would and we start mixing that. it up a bit. And you can use course. a blender or smash them with a knife, whatever works okay. for you. Smash them. Give the kids that yeah, project yeah. if you're cooking with your family. Just, you Let guys do the steam. smashing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, some kosher salt. That's always good. A little bit of lemon pepper. Okay. Some cumin and some granulated garlic. Mmm. And then you can mix that up with your hand or with the whisk. You Yummy. Get a nice crust going in. The crust to me, I mean, that's why I like, that is what I like so much about tilapia because I, did, I used to only like shellfish, but I've recently started liking salmon and tilapia, and the reason I like tilapia so much is the crust usually. Yeah. But I haven't had yours yet, so I'm really looking forward to this. So we got two nice little pieces of tilapia here. We're going to get them... Nice and coated. Okay. Let the excess run off so it doesn't get too messy. Okay. Just throw that right in the pan there. And you can get that tilapia at any local grocery store. It's, it's farm-raised, and it's a sustainable product. So Great. And it's easy to find. Absolutely. And it doesn't make your kitchen smell like fish, which no, I love. It is not fishy at all. <laughs> That's my favorite thing about it. Yeah. When tilapia is very versatile. As far as, you know, you can broil it, you can grill it, you can saute it, you can bake it. There's so many different things you can do it. You can do it uh, just pan sear with no crust. You can crust with multiple things like that. You know. I like those options. And in the meantime, we've got the oil heating up. And I, I guess the key, and I always say this to all of our chefs, really, the key is always having the pan just right before you right. get it on there. Huh? Right. So. You don't want it to get too hot because you're... The breading will burn on you before the fish is done. Okay. About a medium to medium high heat is, is sufficient. Okay, good to know. I can, I can actually smell the ingredients. I can smell the chili. And I can smell the garlic and cumin, too. 
perfect. Perfect. And, you know, it does take a little longer. I always say in New Mexico, I, I, what I've learned is that it does take a little longer for those stoves to get hot right. because of the it altitude. And this, so. te this technique we have with the, you know, the breading, breading and the flouring works for a number of different fishes that we carry. Like okay. Chad said, we're bringing back the halibut next week, and that's going to be great for mm -hmm. us because... Um, the thing we like to do with the halibut, and I wish we could have brought you one today, is almond crusting it. So Ooh. very similar te technique. We do the, the panko and the flour, but then we do almonds instead. That's and instead great. of the red chili butter, we do a uh, creamy lemon caper sauce. Ooh, that sounds yummy. So. See, but that's good. You're offering the alternative. That way, if somebody is at home and they like this recipe, they can make those substitutions with halibut. And Absolutely. then they can have what very they versatile. want, too. That's great. Now, as far as the chili butter goes, uh -huh. that sounds like... I, I said to them before, I said, okay, so this sounded like a healthy meal, almost. And and then you added that word butter, and I know that's going to make it taste better, though, well, isn't it? <laughs> you don't have to add the butter, but... But come on. You know, if you're going to gonna live, might as well. <laughs> right? Live each day to the fullest, I always say. I would say butter as opposed to margin or opposed to oil or anything else like that. Butter's going to have the flavor to it, you know. Sure. And it also helps cut the heat. We use an extra hot chili pod. Okay. So it kind of mellows it out a little bit. So it's a little um, It still has easier. a good spice to it, but good depending on how much spice you want, you can add or reduce the amount of butter you want to use. Okay. Or, or your diet, either way. <laughs> that, exactly. Now, I want to ask you this because, you know, Pelicans has been around since 1977. Clearly, you guys have not been working there since 1977, but what is your history with the restaurant? I started washing dishes at Pelicans when I was 17. Wow. And just worked my way up uh, with my partner, Bobby, now. He was my boss at the time and uh, just worked up to cook and enjoyed, learned that I was a cook. My mother taught me everything I know about Aww. cooking and God bless her, she's, uh, she's been wonderful with that. I'm and just proud, went sure. up to wait staff and bartending and management and then uh, now I have part owner of the West Side Store with my partner, Robert Diaz. That's fantastic. And of course, as you said, you were a waiter at the restaurant. You were serving, and now you're the chef. That's right. Isn't that a great feeling oh, to yeah. know that you've worked your way up? And there must be so much invested as far as you, you know, when you think about that restaurant. You've invested so much of your life. Yeah, that's true. And you don't take any for gr anything for granted. And, and um, you know, when you get to a certain level, you see the people around you, like Chad and Bobby, who have committed a lot of time and, and effort to making Pelicans what it is today. Yes. And, and it gives you a sense of pride. It makes you want to work that much harder for them. You know? I bet. And I'm sure you have a loyal customer base that come in. And, you know, and that's, I think, that's the, really, when it comes down to it, when we talk about food, we talk about family, and we talk about all of those things. And, and it's like you create your own family when Absolutely. you've been there that long. And I love that. So I just wanted to mention that because I think that adds a little something special to the restaurant. Absolutely. Now, okay, so we're, we've got about two minutes. So we've got this cooking. Now, how long would you probably need? See, that's what I never know. How long on each side with tilapia? Well, the fish will tell you when it's ready when you, you'll start to notice a little darkening on the crust on the bottom and then it's time to flip it over and okay if you if you're in a hurry you can throw it in the oven to fish it off finish it off real quick or you can okay. just sear it the entire way what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get my uh, chili butter started too okay great because that's really the, the star of the show here that is the star you have about a minute and a half for that so sure. let's get yeah, that plenty of time. that's plenty of time for this and I also want to put up the lower third on the screen so you can see exactly where the locations are. Of course, Pelicans has been located just east of Eubank at 9900 Montgomery Boulevard since 1977. On the south side of the street, the number to call is 298-7678. And Pelicans on the west I can't do it. I'm trying. West side. West side? <laughs> it's 10,022 Coors Boulevard. You can call 889-2000. And the website is pelicans-abq.com. That's Correct? Cool. Okay, so now the star of the show is heating up. We're almost there with the tilapia. Tilapia cooks fairly fast, so if Definitely. you have any other side dish that you want to create with it, get that ready to go and, and finish that and then finish off with your tilapia. Cause it, and what would you recommend a good side dish? I'm a sautéed asparagus guy. Mm -hmm. I love sautéed asparagus or steamed vegetables. Uh, rice pilaf is excellent with that Ooh, dish. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yes. And then I guess you would imagine, I would imagine a little lemon on top, right? We're going to go we're with gonna the lime. lime. Oh, we're going to use lime. Oh, good. Well, when we come back from the break, we are going to finish these preparations, and then we are going to be lucky because we're going to get to taste it. You can see today's recipe for the pinon crusted tilapia with red chili butter at casa.com, and we're eating the feast after the break.